So when you think about social media presence or you think about products or companies, you know, everyone's trying to kind of crack this nut of how do we market properly to teenagers? Yeah. Well, I think that's really important because you really need to recognize what group you're marketing to. And so if who you're marketing to falls under teenagers, um, there are a couple things that teenagers, it, it depends on what type of teenager you're necessarily marketing to. So what you are marketing. Um, one thing that teenagers love right now is memes. <laughs> memes are a great way to market. I know that kind of sounds really silly. Most people would know. I Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still getting my handle, handle around memes, so. <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this right now. Happy holidays, everyone. So today's episode is going to be one of my favorite ones from the vault. It's a conversation I had uh, with my amazing daughter, Abby Smith, and we talked about generational communication. So this is a few years old, but I think you're going to find it very, very valuable and very, very helpful. And at least at the bare minimum, entertaining. So enjoy the show. And as I'm spending time with my daughter and we're talking about generational communication, I hope you get to spend plenty of time with the loved ones in your life. And I look forward to a really, really great 2022. The Workplace Therapist Show is sponsored by the Leadership Foundry, bringing a cutting edge real world approach to leadership development. The Leadership Foundry partners with each client organization to create a custom tailored experience, virtual or in person, that combines innovative leadership content, world-class facilitators, and one-on-one -on -one coaching to ensure your leaders have everything they need to grow and thrive. To find out more and to design your one-of-a-kind program, visit myleadershipfoundry.com. So today's show, we are doing Generational Communication Part Two, the holiday edition. And to help us along on this topic, I have my wonderful, amazing, talented, incredible daughter. Keep going. Keep going. Abi <laughs> Abigail Smith. <gasps> Hello. Abby, how are you? You got applause from Isaac and Whitney. <laughs> We're back. I'm good. Thank you for having me. I know. It's so good to have my squatter back in, back in her chair. This is what this I deal with every so day. Every day. Incredible. Um, well, so from our conversation last time, we spent some time talking about generational communication, and I have been making notes of new phrases you use, because apparently okay. everything you talked about before is now out the window, and now there's new stuff. But I think it's worthwhile to comment on the guest who's also joined us on the show, our friend Rory the Dinosaur, who is behind you. Any... Would you? No comment. Would you no like comment. to tell the story? <laughs> I would not like to tell the story. story. You can tell the story, but I'm not telling the story. So Abby shared with me not too long ago that she is afraid of dinosaurs. And we learned this when we went on a dinosaur ride at Disney. And so we got the picture at the end of the ride. And she's curled up in her 10-year-old brother's lap <laughs> in a little ball. And I said, Abby, what's this? And it, she was, said, it was not my best moment. She said, I am afraid of dinosaurs. What? I never told you? Um, by the way, if you hear jingling in the background, I, I am wearing an elf hat, just He's for those that are not watching the show. Uh, so, as any good dad would do, when you went off to cross-country camp, what did I do? He dinosaured my room. I came back, everything in my room was gone and had been replaced with dinosaur stuff. So, everything from my bedspread to my wall decor. Yep. To, the, there was this guy in the corner. Rory. Rory, you know. Call him by his proper name. Excuse me, Rory. If you are Rory. listening to the show, Rory is about a six foot tall cutout of a very friendly dinosaur. Friendly, yes. I think there's yes. flesh in his teeth, actually. I think, I think there is too. There was definitely flesh in the teeth of the dinosaur on the bedspread. Your dad's champ. That was so fun. Champ. There was, yeah, there was. The, the dinosaur bread spread, lamps. Lamps, plastic dinosaurs, pictures, pillows, he, posters. He's actually very artistic. Dad, he, he's actually really good at decorating. So he made like these little scenes There's with all the dinosaur right action here. figures. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It was creative. It was creative. I don't think anyone has ever done that before. So Ever had their room dinosaured? No. Yeah. Well. That was unique. So Rory, 
has joined us. And we also learned that Roar means I love you in dinosaur. That was what one of the posters said. Roar so, means I love you in great. dinosaur. That so was Abby, classic. Abby Roar. So, I'm not saying it back. So now that we've got Rory do, joining us, uh, here are some new phrases that I picked up. So when we last spent time together, you yes. educated us on things like lit and phi. I learned that I'm lit and phi. That is false. <laughs> that is very false, but okay. Um, throwing shade, salt. Yeah. We, we talked about all that yeah. kind of stuff. So I've, I've got some new ones. Okay. Ready? Woat. Woat. That is worst of all time. Worst of all time. If I was going to use it in a sentence, I would say, my dad is the woat. He's pretty terrible. <laughs> and kidding. it should be the goat. But even that doesn't sound right. Greatest of all time, but Greatest I don't want to be a goat. Boat? Best and of all time? No, that's not a thing. But no, this is kind of old. He's just catching up on this. Yeah, this was like boat. a year ago. I would say, like, if you asked me this a year ago, I'd I'm be just like, wow. Up. I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing, okay. okay. Woat. Yeah. And you'll say that to your little brother. Aaron, you're the woat. Because <laughs> Aaron is the woat. Is Aaron's the woat. a character. <laughs> he is a character. Stay tuned. Aaron will be coming on the show. I the really hope not for your sake. I hope Aaron <laughs> does not come on the show. <laughs> uh, okay, another thing, a phrase you use with me. I can't with you. I can't with you. That's just like, you're too much. You're just too much. I can't with you. You dinosaured my room. I can't with you. I sent you a picture the other day of my lunch at, at Pond City Market. I do. A big, a big oh, ramen, ramen bowl. And I'm sitting there in my world history class, and I get a picture of ramen. I'm like, are you kidding me, Dad? Really? And then really? you wrote back, and she said, I can't with you. I can't with you. I can't with you. Well, who does that? But it doesn't matter. Continue. Your dad, he obviously... Not amused. Traj. <laughs> what is what is trag? I don't say trag. I say tragic. Sometimes you say trag. Sometimes you say hashtag trag. <laughs> no, I say hashtag tragic. Hashtag tragic. I don't say trag. No, tragic. It's just like, oh my gosh, that's just, just, just too much. That's just unfortunate. It's tragic. Has it taken the place of extra? Oh, um, you don't kind use extra of. as much anymore. I don't, because it's just kind of a lot, you know. Once, once too many people start saying it, it's like I can't say this. Anymore. So it's now tragic? It. it moved tragic. on to tragic? Yeah. Pretty much everything Aaron, my little brother, says is tragic. That's, that's when I really use it. So you hear it the most. Tragic. How about hashtag blessed? <laughs> I don't say that. No, but, but you... That's a joke. But that is 100% it's, it's, a joke. I've noticed as the dad, it's used in a sarcastic way. It is used in a sarcastic so way. So you would use it. What would be an example of how you would use hashtag blessed? I don't know. It has to come to me. That's, I would use that when... You are hashtag blessed that you got your room dinosaur. Yeah. Hashtag blessed. You could say that. Okay. Got any more for me? Literally. Literally. I do, I do say that a lot. You'll say literally you're for, the worst. I use that for exaggeration purposes. Yeah, if you'll I say really, literally you're the worst. If which, I really want to make something dramatic, you add a literally in there and it just, it sounds better. It, it, it sounds more extreme. Yeah. Literally, I'm the best. Mm, not yes. true <laughs> all right here's one that i think will be all those are pretty easy to interpret if you were a 40 something yeah um neck yourself okay that no this no this is a no, little no. one that i'm still struggling with this. apparently i don't do with it this right two years later that's so unfortunate so so educate me and the rest of our listeners on Neck Yourself. Okay, so Neck Yourself, I do this ironically. Like, I think it's just hilarious. Where, where's this come from? Was it, it, did, I really don't know, honestly. Was it Aaron? I Somebody have not, told me giraffes. Something about giraffes? Well, yeah, giraffes like neck themselves. Like that's that's what they do. Like when they, that's how they like fight. I don't know. They like hit each other's necks. I don't, I don't know. Um, but Neck Yourself, it's someone does something stupid. You do this, and then they so have for to those hit themselves that are, on the neck like that. That are listening and not what Abby just did. She made a motion like take all your fingers and your thumb. And I can't pull do them it together. Right, kind of like you know, have you ever seen those Italian movies and they're like duh, 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 and then they got their hand. You do that and you show it's like it's almost like a little giraffe's face, <laughs> like, you know, a little puppet, a little little, mu little sock face, I don't and think then you that's turn it. Up. I don't know what it's from, but that's what you're doing. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah. get the listeners. You got to paint a picture for the listeners, Abby. Okay, I'm sorry. Excuse me people watching sorry you work your magic listeners Dad. listeners little little sock puppet facing up neck yourself and then what and then if you see that you're, you're supposed to do something you're this just is supposed where I to hit yourself up. on the neck but he does this thing where he he does the he does the finger thing and he pecks himself on the <laughs> <neck>. <laughs> too. 
I, I, I peck it's my actually, neck. It's actually, it's so much the, better than with, hitting on the with, neck. With, with the sock puppet. I pe- it's pe- so much better. It's so much better. It's not what I'm supposed to do. It's apparently. not what you're supposed to do, but it's a million times better. And she better. tells me, no, dad, no. I say no, like. but keep going. Because that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> just close. Just almost there, but not quite. I'm literally the best. Again, we're back. Oh. Uh. Uh, that's all the, of my notes of new phrases. What Any other new phrases that you use that you can think of that I missed? Honestly, I can't really think of it. I, I feel like they come up in context, you know? Yeah. But I don't, I don't really think about it. It just kind of happens. Okay. So now I'm going to go on to uh, the main topic of the show, other than generational communication. Yes. I did say this was a holiday edition. Oh, fabulous. Okay, so let's start with this general bucket question. There may be a lot of people out there listening today that are wondering, what would I get my teenager for Christmas? Okay. I think it depends on who your teenager is. So what would be some general things that you think would be some pieces of advice for parents or grandparents that would be listening that would say, I got a teenager. I'm not really sure what to get her or him. Ask them. That is step number one. Just ask them what they want because I don't think that there's something general that everyone's necessarily going to want or need. I mean, a new phone is always something you can <laughs> you can go right with. But I think everyone wants something different. And I think that if you tell kids like what you expect, um, you pretty much let me do all of the Christmas shopping. You give me a budget and you say, okay, send me a list of everything that you want. And that's great. My expectations are met. Your expectations are met. And I think I think that's the way to do it. Okay. When, once you get to be a teenager. So look at where this is going. Clear expectations, folks. Clear expectations. You like this. That is the best she way to go. She is my daughter. <laughs> Abby, you're the goat. I am the goat. You are the goat. Dad, you're the woat. Goat. Love. <laughs> are there any other safe plays? Like iTunes gift card? No, no. not really? No. Well, yeah, what about gift cards? Well, how about visa cards? Like the oh, loaded visa. Oh, yeah. The Those prepaid, are great. Those are the great. The prepaid visa cards. I think with a girl, you can pretty much... I think all teenage girls, a Lululemon gift card is good. For L- boys, L- I really L- don't know, though. Okay, so if we stay with the girl thing, you've, you've gone through some different styles and fashions. Yeah. You went like Vineyard Vines for a while, and then you went yeah. J. Crew. Not to say you don't like those things. No, I still now, like those things. And then things, now you're but... still in... Now you're into free people and anthropology. Yeah. yeah. That is pretty extreme difference, but and, I like a little bit of everything. And every time you now go to TJ Maxx or the mall, I say, please yes. don't free any more people. <laughs> you freed enough people. Don't free any more. I do kind of have a little And she always problem. frees more people. It's, every time she goes to the mall, issue. more people are freed. I can't. I can't help it. It happens. It happens. I'm looking like an angry elf with this. You are you know looking that? like an angry elf. This that is his every day. Angry elf. You guys see the nice side. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're now the woat. You went from goat to woat right there. Right there. Any other piece of recommendations, people listening, to say, what should I get my I don't know. Son or I really, I, I can't what's, think what's of anything cool? that's what's clear in? across the board. Um, Adidas is really in right now. Oh, so for shoes. I would say that's pretty clear. Yeah, that's, that's all around. Adidas is in, like t-shirts and everything. Girls and guys? Yeah. But I, I really just think it depends on who it is. You know, everyone has different interests. You Adidas? Know, to the, I'm, I'm wearing... What am I? What am, oh no! What, am I wearing? what have I done? What, I, what have I done? He's gonna. I think I'm wearing Adidas. Oh man, am I? I'm the goat. <laughs> I'm back in. I'm trying, folks. I'm trying hard. It's a. It's a. He's definitely trying hard. It's a lost cause. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I am not getting anywhere. Um, all right. So I've got another question in for you. Okay. And we're gonna start this question, and then we're gonna go into the break, and then we'll come back after, okay. after the break. Yeah. Best way to market to teenagers. So when you think about social media presence or you think about products or companies, you know, everyone's trying to kind of crack this nut of how do we market properly to teenagers? Yeah. Well, I think it's really important because you really need to recognize what group you're marketing to. And so if who you're marketing to falls under teenagers, um, there are a couple things that teenagers, it, it depends on what type of teenager you're necessarily marketing to. So what you are marketing Um, One thing that teenagers love right now is memes. (laughs) Memes are a great way to market. I know that kind of sounds really silly. Most people would know. Well, I don't don't know. 
I don't know. I'm still getting my handle handle around memes. So <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this right now. So t- um, educate people listening about a meme. What's a meme? Okay, so a meme is kind of like it's a play on something. It's like it's I don't really know how to describe it. I'm looking for the word, but I can't really think of it. So it's like you take a picture where someone's making a funny face and you caption it something that's relatable. So it would just be like a funny situation and you're poking fun at it, you know? All right, so I got a good, good example. Okay. So last oh, no. year. Yeah, this is terrible. Why don't this you, is terrible. I know what you're going to say. You, you, you want to you tell the story? Okay, I'll tell the story. So last time I was on the show, we talked a little bit about group me, okay? And so we talked about group me for classes and how that's a common thing that people in high school use. So I was in one for my biology class. Now, granted, there was 150 kids in this group me. Okay, so I was on my phone. And at the time, I had a really junk phone. Like, it would just spaz all the time. Junk phone? It was a little junky. It was because it was, yeah, long story. I paid for that phone. It was junky. It was, no, it's not that you paid for it. It was just I had broken my other phone. I had to get a refurbished phone. And the oh, this is where it slipped junky. out of the back of your pants into the toilet? <laughs> Is this, that was, was this, that time. Was this that time? <laughs> that was that time. And then I had to get a refurbished phone because I couldn't fix it. Anyways, but we'll, we'll finish the story in a second. Okay, we're going to go to break, folks, because Abby needs to collect herself. Yeah, She's I mourning the collect. loss of phones of, that I paid for. And when we come back from the break, she's going to tell this um, hashtag tragic story. It was it was tragic. It was it tragic, was tragic. Of, of what happened when a inadvertent picture was posted and memes were created. So stay right tuned, Brandon Smith Show. When we come right back, we'll continue down the path of generational communication, part due, holiday edition. Stay tuned. This is Brandon Smith. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. It is the season of family and hopefully not family dysfunction. And it's also that time of year that if you're anything like me, you're planning for the next year. You're thinking about how can I set next year up to be really, really awesome? Well, I wanna help you with that. If you haven't downloaded one of my workbooks on workplace happiness, I'm gonna offer a special gift to all my listeners that if you download one of those books, use the promotional code New Year, all one word, New Year, either uppercase or lowercase, and you can receive over 50% off any of my three workbooks. So whether you're looking for the right job, you could download that workbook, or the right culture, or the right boss. All of them, the promo code will work. So consider that my gift to you as you get ready for the new year, and let's make this next year, 2018, a great one. Welcome back to The Brandon Smith Show. I'm your host, of course, Brandon (laughs) Smith, and today we're talking generational communication with my one and only daughter, Abigail Smith. Yes. Abigail already said during the break, you're taking me on a shopping trip, Dad. Uh, no. no. He owes me big after that comment. Not. What comment? I'm just, I'm just. Okay, it doesn't matter. Back I'm to just the story. Sp- speaking hashtag truth. This is all truth. So finish the story. This is a real story. This is a real story. So I was, um, my okay, my junk phone spazzed. Long story short, after, I ended up this sending. This was on the toilet. This is the one that was no, the toilet. No, no, this wasn't. This was this is like a refurbished phone. Refurbished phone. So, but it it spazzed the screen. Whatever. Long story short, I ended up sending a picture. We had actually we'd gone to Nordstrom's the weekend before, and Dad tried on a bunch of sunglasses. So I'd taken pictures of him in them so he could see what he looked like. So, um. A picture of my dad in a pair of aviators got sent on my biology group message with 150 kids from my grade, and it was it was funny. It was during study hall, but literally everyone in the room like looked at me because they were all in that bio class, and everyone was like, "What? What did you do?" And I was like, "I am so sorry. Like, I did not mean to send that. Like, uh, like ignore that, guys." But some kids thought it was hilarious and ended up turning it into a meme. So the picture was him, and he was like, he was looking over the glasses like this, you know, being all cool, because he wanted to practice all of his faces, of course. And um, I think they captioned it, it was like, when you do a paper at 3 a.m. and still get an A, I think that was the caption. So there we go. That's right. Yeah. That's a meme. That is a meme. That's a meme. Long story short, that is a meme. 
So I think that's a really great way to market things. Um, it's a way that a lot of people look at. And there's tons of memes account that have an embarrassing amount of followers. Um, memes accounts? Like oh, just people yeah. that just do, they, all they do is just memes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so many. So tons. they're generally funny. Is what oh, makes yeah, it, they're really funny. Memes are funny. Yeah, and they're they're poking fun at something. They're a play on something. They're supposed to be relatable about feelings everyone has, um, situations a lot of people have been in. So that those are memes. I think that's a really good way to market things if you're going for teenagers. However, I think if you're marketing a product, um, a really good thing is so on Instagram, I would recommend having a really good theme. Um, so that's the way your feed looks and being very aesthetically pleasing. Um, so what teenagers want to see, if they're going to follow an account, like memes, you know, that's one thing. But another thing is having really pretty pictures, all with similar filters, all that look very like clear and concise, um, kind of branding it. I think that's important. Do you need yeah. to have a pug to be have an effective? It's apparently, I mean, that helps. Pugs that helps. are... A necessity. I love Doug the Pug. If you're ever bored and not feeling so great, look up Doug the Pug. He is the best. Doug the Pug is the goat. He is the woat. I love Doug. No, he's the woat. Doug's hilarious. He, like, matches his owner. It's so funny. They have, like, matching pantsuits. It's so funny. He's hilarious. I love Doug. This is a fundamental disagreement Abby and I have. Dogs should never be an accessory. They should not be an accessory. In his opinion. Dog should never they be should an accessory. Not be an accessory. In his opinion. But it's just so darn cute. Like, how can you not? It's adorable. He's like 3 million followers. Yeah, we were in Nashville this weekend, and Doug actually lives in Nashville. So we were really excited about trying to go find Doug. He was not having it. We. Be careful on the we. <laughs> I was not excited about it. He was not it. having it. He did not. He did not want to see Doug. I, I don't not. know how. Doug's so cute. And Doug also, that's another thing about Doug, is Doug is relatable. You know, Doug takes pictures and the captions are funny. The captions, it'll be like, um, he'll, he has funny pictures. Like the last one I saw was like him on an airplane and he was making like a face. It was like, it was like when you're, when the person behind you keeps kicking your seat. So there you go. Like the, the relatability is relatable, relatable, funny meme. Yeah. Good theme. Good theme. Aesthetically pleasing. Oh, can you think of a product right now that you think does that well? You'd say, yeah, yeah, that like I that. I can think of several. I think a lot of clothing brands actually do it really well. Um, oh, shoot. Um, I would say J. Crew does it pretty well. Free People does it well. Honestly, I don't really branch out and look that much at other clothing brands I don't really shop at, so I can't really tell you. Um, I think a lot of people do it well, though, too, on Instagram. And this was something you commented on yesterday. You said you can tell when Instagram is not fresh, when someone's account is not fresh or it looks kind of You old. can tell how old people are who are doing the Instagram. Like you can tell. You know, you can tell when it's a 20-something-year-old who just has a lot of time, who is a design person, or you can tell when people are paying big money for it to be done because you can see that. And I think that's important too. Um I think it also, like it said, it totally depends on your audience. You're going to market differently when you're aiming for, or you should be marketing differently when you're aiming for a 16-year-old's attention versus a 40-year-old's attention, you know? And you should even be on different marketing sites, you know? If you're looking for teenagers, I would not market on Facebook. I would market on Instagram. However, if your audience is 40-year-olds, LinkedIn, Facebook, you know? There again. I was waiting for LinkedIn to get thrown under the bus. I was just waiting. What's wrong with LinkedIn? Again. LinkedIn's great. Actually, I don't know. I don't have LinkedIn. I've actually never been on LinkedIn. I know nothing. Well, I don't need it. Because you don't have a job. It's for people with I jobs. We had clarified a job. that I last time. Had she a did job actually last time. she did actually get paid as a lifeguard, folks. For those of you following the storyline. I did. I Abby got paid. She actually got paid. It's probably, and it's all gone. And she got and she got a little a little bit of short term fame. Where people came up and said, I know you, you're the girl on that podcast. That was actually so funny. It was like the week after the podcast aired, I was lifeguarding and someone was like, hey, you were on the podcast. And I was like, And then then they said to her, you really do have a job. Like it (laughs) was a surprise. And I was like, I do. He does not give me enough credit. I was out there. I give you plenty of credit. 
All right, so we've we've talked about generational communication. We move that into the holidays and talking about marketing and yeah. how to think about that. And I think that's yeah. good to educate all of us. Um, now we'll just kind of end it at talking about family traditions because I think that's a good thing. What are you? What are some of your favorite family traditions? Things that we do that you like, and it can be big things, small things, just things that make make the holidays good for you. Well, as much as I hate doing it, which I do, I do really enjoy our Christmas lights. He goes pretty hardcore on the Christmas lights. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I I need to I need to I need to rub my eyes for a minute. He does. He rubs his eyes whenever I've whenever I've overwhelmed him. She has. She, you said something important there. You said as much as I hate doing it, he goes crazy on the Christmas lights. Okay. Yes. Well. Okay. If <laughs> <laughs> who's doing the Christmas lights? You're, well, the thing is, listen. He he does. You're you're pretty intense about not intense about, but if you're gonna do something, you, you like everyone to do it. It's like we all spread pine straw in the spring. We all help a little bit on Christmas lights Good. in the winter. We all do stuff like that. That's no fun. It's called work. So yeah, Ugh. that's it's rough. It's a rough. good thing. I don't understand. So I like looking at the Christmas lights. I really do. But they are a pain to untangle and everything. But at the end of the day, I really do enjoy that. Um, Mom does a fabulous job with the decorating inside. I love that too. We have some, we have a Star Wars tree. That's fun. It's all Star Wars and it's big. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, So I really do like that about the holidays. The decorating is really fun. Um, As a family that's not really holiday traditional, I love going to Disney World. We, we have a lot of fun. That is probably my favorite family thing we do. But that not necessarily holidays. Yeah, that's not necessarily holidays. We don't like the crowds. Yeah. We, we do it pretty strategically. So. Any other family traditions? I really think that's it. I'm not a big Thanksgiving person. I gotta say, I'm not that big about Thanksgiving food. I don't like it that much. Yeah, you don't like the I whole don't really like Thanksgiving. turkey and stuffing. and. No, it's not my fave. So, Why? Cranberry sauce? Pumpkin pie. I just don't really like it. And Thanksgiving's always so much drama. There's always someone stressed out. There's always something happening. Like, it's way, it's overrated. Thanksgiving is the most overrated holiday. Overrated holiday? Throwing shade on Thanksgiving. I'm sorry. We could all skip it. I'd be fine. Wow. <laughs> Rough. I know. I know. So, I, I would say, because we're, we're nearing the end of our show here, is there anything as you think about uh, 2018, since we're rounding the end of 2017, we're going yeah. to 2018. Yeah. As you sit here, almost 16. Almost. Catch me on the rose, people. <laughs> Just oh, kidding. no. <laughs> what are your goals for 2018? Do you have any goals for next year? Well, I mean, I think going into every year, you want to be better. You want to work on things that you're not as good about. So... I'm not going to go into that. That'll just get, make him too satisfied. Oh, I was getting excited. He'll, be, really like, was. he'll be like, yes. <laughs> Come on now. You can't put that bone out there and then just take it away. Yeah, I'm definitely taking that away. That is gone. Um, but yeah, I think. I tell you what, if you don't answer the question, I'll answer it for you. I, I, could, I could set some goals for you. <laughs> no, That's what I'm any, not about any that. good dad should do, right? Set I'm some goals. I'm not about that. But I do think setting goals is super important. I think that that is something that a lot of people look at, you know, on January 1st. Like, what are my goals? But I think, I mean, setting realistic goals is great. I think that's, like, something that definitely does not get carried through. Give me one bone, through. One goal. Come on. Okay. Well, I want to – well, I do. I run track and cross country. So I think one of my goals is to become a better runner. Okay. I'll, I'm, I'm not giving him what he wants. That's not what he's she looking won't, for. She won't go I'm not doing towards that. The work thing, folks. She won't. I'm not doing that. She's not good. Not not today. Get a good job and some couple of jobs in the summer. Lifeguarding. You could continue lifeguarding. Get another job. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to do that. Get another job too. But it's fine. Jobs what about are good. you, Dad? What are your goals? Be a better dad. It's true. You could use. I'm already. Words. I'm already the goat. The vote, correction, correction. I'm always looking to be a better dad. Yeah. Because every time you change, then I got to change. I got to adjust how I parent. I think parent. that's important. You adjust, you change, I change. I have to. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. It's the, it's the constant goal setting, the constant readjustment that I think a lot of times is overlooked. So and that's each, important. And you and your two brothers, all three of you are very different. We are very different. So that is very funny. We're parent, all very parent different. You very differently. Yeah. 
actually that is something I've appreciated. I mean, it's kind of random going on this, but you know, growing up with brothers that are super different from me, I think that's that's just interesting because we all came from the same place. But that's, that's a little bit of generational communication. That is some communication. Nice little tie back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, as I always ask at the very end of every show, yeah. One life hack. What's something particularly as you think about the holidays? What's okay. something that we could all be doing differently or more of? to make our lives a little less dysfunctional. Okay. Well, I think something that's helpful, which I do not do often enough, but I think it's setting like... Clean your room? Do the laundry? Well, yeah, actually. That's kind of... That's probably good, but also setting do the like... <laughs> never going to do that, but okay. Um, it's setting Most a long. little... Okay, setting a little time at the end of every day. Just like think about what you're thankful for. And I've been trying to get into a habit of doing that. I actually think it's better doing the morning for me. I like doing that in the morning. But just wake up and think about one thing that you're thankful for. I think that's something we could all be doing a better job of. Because it's hard. This is kind of a stressful time, you know, for, like, school people who are still in school. You know, you've got finals and everything, and parents and stuff got to worry about Christmas. So I think it's easy to get wrapped up in everything. But just think about what you're thankful for. I like that. That's great. Be thankful because it is a stressful time. Yeah. Abigail, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for you too, Dad, most of the time when there aren't dinosaurs in my room. I'm thankful for Rory the dinosaur. And his, his mouth is very close to your head, by the way, If for those of you that, that are listening. It's true. It I would looks say, like he's eating me I right would now. say <laughs> he's photobombing her, but we learned on the last show, photobombing is no longer Five years thing. ago. Five years ago. I would say. So he's, he's creeping? Creeping, maybe? No? No? Okay. He's getting there. Don't worry. You're getting I'm there, Dad. Slowly, You're getting there. Slowly getting there. Slowly. So thank you for joining us today for, on the Brandon Smith Show. I'm so thrilled we were able to talk about generational communication, and I got to bring my lovely daughter, Abby, back for the conversation. Uh, and of course, listen to us every Sunday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, where we drop a new show. You can follow us on iTunes if you're not already listening. And of course, Facebook Live. Uh, at facebook.com forward slash Brandon Smith WPT for workplace therapist and follow us on Twitter, Twitter at the WP therapist. So until next week, uh, enjoy and have a wonderful, great week and an awesome life. Talk to y'all soon. I'm Brandon Smith and you've known me as the workplace therapist. My passion and purpose has always been to cure workplaces from dysfunction and to make your work life better. But did you also know I'm the co-founder of the Leadership Foundry? The Leadership Foundry is an innovative approach to helping teams, organizations, and leaders develop their leadership skills by taking them through a six-month journey of not only refining their leadership skills through courses and classes, but also through coaching. Well, in addition to our platform, we're excited to share that we're launching the Leadership Foundry podcast this January as a result. This podcast is free, and these curated episodes will answer the questions you have as a leader right now. Things like, how do I more effectively delegate so I'm not doing all the work of my team? How do I communicate more effectively so we're all on the same page? How do I manage my time and help prioritize? And meetings. We all know meetings are such a pain for all of us. Catch these episodes and the first episode on January 10th on iTunes, Spotify, and your other favorite podcast platforms.